Welcome back to the Middle Room Workshop. Today I'm going to review the Wicked Vision Pro 45V laser engraver. Larger, smarter, and more powerful than ever. Without further ado, let's get into it. It has been a while since my last upload, and coincidentally, it was the review of the first machine by Wicred. After the success of the first machine, the Wicred Vision 20W, later upgraded to 40W, Wicred have decided to relaunch a bigger, more powerful, and smarter machine with some interesting new pieces of technologies built in. The machine is packed with a bunch of interesting features, including hair assist with onboard control, an enclosure with an instruction system, an alignment camera, an automated focusing system, and for those that care about flying control, you also get a mobile app for your smartphone. The working area is about 500 times 320 millimeters, which makes it about 30% bigger than its little brother, but it can take materials up to 580 times 400 millimeter. Plus, with the addition of the auto pass through feeder, your machine can easily take sheets 460 mm wide and up to 3500 mm long, which is massive. Now, before getting any further, just a quick note, I received this machine free of charge with a request to review it. However, I'm not being paid by Wicred or any one of its affiliate for this review. I like to keep my video reviews unbiased, therefore all of the information you are about to hear in this video review represent my honest opinion about this machine. And as a such, I'm also going to share what I like and what I don't like. As usual, I break down my video reviews into different sections so that I can try to cover most of the aspect for the machines. So if you are interested to some particular section, head up on the timeline below and skip as you please. Now, starting with the assembly, the machine comes ready to go, no assembly required. All you need is remove the accessories from the inside with all the packaging material, unscrew the transport screws, install the cutting bed and slide in the dirt collection tray on the bottom and you're good to go. Bear in mind that the box is large and heavy and you might want to have an extra pair of hands just to take the machine out of the box. To install the bed you will need to power up the machine for the first time so that the machine rises up out of transport mode and clears the space for it. All the connections are located on the back side where you have power, data, air and extractions. The only exception is for the rotary connection which is located in the inside for obvious reasons. It takes no more than 10 minutes to open the box, install the software and launch your first project. And if you are new to laser engraving and wondering about your first project, you'll be welcomed in the Make It Up with many free projects ready to go. The machine has a minimalistic and elegant design with a futuristic appearance and merges nicely in an office environment. In fact, it looks more like a piece of appliance than an obvious 3D printer. The fully enclosed design and built-in extraction system makes it a great choice for creators looking for an SL-free laser engraving experience. The frame is entirely custom designed and enclosed in a fire retardant metal shell. It uses steel rails and rollers for the movement, the wiring and the hair hose are nicely routed onto drag chains and the air connection to the laser module is done for a flexible hose. The machine comes with a lot of features, way more than other lasers in the market. Starting with the full metal enclosure with a high protective glass which makes it a class 1 laser engraver which is both safe and does not require you to wear any goggles. Built-in fume structure with onboard control for clean and smell-free operation, which is quiet and effective. Built-in air assist with onboard control, which allows you to make clean cuts from your first project. The pump is a typical air pump and is also quiet and effective. Built-in alignment camera, which makes placing and aligning your projects very easy. The camera is an HD resolution camera and its alignment precision is great. You will be able to drop in anything, including scrap pieces of material, then move, scale and rotate the projects in the software and you're good to go. The only one note though is the, the alignment through light burn is not as good as in the Make It Up. Of course, it all depends on the alignment process you make during the initial setup, but I have repeated this a few times and although it is perfectly workable, it remains a bit less precise. 
an aluminum bed with blades and dirt collection tray, which allows you to easily clean the machine. A mobile app controller, which allows you to work offline without a PC connection. And the key feature of this machine is its ability to transform. Basically, the Z-axis is implemented by moving or extending and contracting the machine up and down. This allows the machine to operate the built-in autofocus system, simply drop the material or product onto the bed, place the project onto it and click focus. The laser moves into position and the entire machine lowers down until it senses the material. An easy to use roller attachment with a great software functionality that makes engraving cylindrical objects a breeze. And finally, a bunch of safety features. The machine comes with a free proprietary software called Make It and is available for most platforms, which is capable and simple to use. It offers a straightforward interface, allows for simple vector design, as well as imports raster images and vectors of several formats. Plus, you get access to a library of projects ready to cut. The layering system is decent and allows you to work on more complex multi-powered projects with both engraving and cutting. The cool features of the software is the ability to visually select the fill engraving darkness from the material library. Plus, you get the option to create your own material. Now, the software is a little bit limited in what you can do, and if you're not new to laser engraving and you're a season in this LB, you get a full compatibility with Lightburn, which I regard the best software for laser engraving to date. Fortunately for us, Lightburn is now fully compatible with the Wicred machines, and this also includes the camera alignment, which wasn't possible in previous versions. To work with Lightburn, there is a little bit of setup work, especially regarding the camera alignment. But once you're done, you are all set to go. The machine comes with a highly sophisticated 45 watt diode laser module with what they call a beam focus technology, which makes the spot smaller and therefore more effective. And it has a built-in touchless autofocus sensor. The module mounts directly on a stiff bracket to the X-axis trolley. The focusing system is automated and the Z-axis requires no setup or programming to work as compared to some other machines. Focusing is as easy as it can get. Just click the focus button in the software and the machine does the rest. As for the accessories, you get a lot of stuff. You get the latest rotary attachment, the Wicred Rotary Pro, with all the attachments you may need to tackle most cylindrical objects. Then you get a massive variety of materials, which includes eight pieces of plywood, a sheet of acrylic, a sheet of silver ABS, pieces of leather, some ready to engrave leather and uh, tags items, and a couple of coasters. So if you're new to laser engraving, you will already have also material to try. The roller is very simple to install and operate, especially using the Make It Up. To install it, just remove the bed, fix the attachment on the dedicated location on the left of the machine, and connect the wiring directly inside of the machine. After that, measure your cylindrical object, chuck it in, Load your design in the software and you're good to go. All right, let's now get into the capabilities. Whenever I get a new machine, I run some testing to assess its cutting and engraving performance with the most common materials. Now, the test results I usually show in my initial reviews. I run the machine with the factory settings and I use the air pump which comes with the laser so you know exactly what to expect. The only uh, exception here is that I do most of my testing using light burn whenever I can. Going ahead with the result, cutting 4 mm birch plywood cleanly at 700 mm per minute, 95% power. You could go as fast as 800 mm per minute, but you would end up with stringing on the back side, which would leave your part with rough edges. I would conservatively go to no more than 650 mm per minute, 95% power, for a good and consistent result each time. Then, 6 mm birch plywood, it maxed out my test at 450 mm per minute, 95% power. I did some manual testing afterwards and I got 550 mm per minute, 100% power. 3 mm laminated HDF, it maxed out my testing at 900 mm per minute, 90% power. Also, here I did some additional manual testing afterward and I was able to cut at 1200 mm per minute, 100% power. 5 mm acrylic, 
one pass at 300 millimeters per minute, 90% power. 1.5 millimeters ABS, 1,800 millimeters per minute, 90% power in a single pass. But you could go as fast as 2,000 millimeters per minute, 90% power. However, this speed you get roughly just as well. As for the maximum depth at standard focus height, I was able to go through 39 millimeters pine wood in three passes at 100 millimeters per minute, 100% power. The cut hedge, however, is not clean. You in fact get a clean cut up to the second pass and a depth of about 27 millimeters. I did not offset the z-axis into the material to keep the test coherent with the standard focus you get in the Make It software. However, in light burn you could go deeper, therefore optimizing your cutting. I also ran a fit test to find the curve value that allows you to get this nice interference fit which allows parts to stack together without any glue. And on a trim millimeter laminated HDF, the average curve value for vertical slots is about minus 0.100 millimeters and for horizontal slots is about minus 0.125 millimeters. The engraving, in particular text engraving, was a little bit trickier than I expected as I could not get proper text engraving using Lightburn and I had to perform countless tests to figure out what the problem was. It seems like the machine handles Lightburn generated projects differently compared to how it processes them in its proprietary Make It Up. I found that the dynamic power modulation or MO4 is not very clear. The machine sometimes does not engrave cleanly in curvy section, which can be noticed in some of my previous testing, where all the curvy section of the text, line and grave are not visible. Similarly, with a constant power M03, you seem to be getting the same power result across different powers. With text cutting through 3mm plywood at 10,000 mm per minute, 50% power, which is obviously not possible. Therefore, the machine drops the line engraving speed drastically. After countless tests, I found that both engravings are best with dynamic power modulation or M04. Then the line engravings are best at around 4 to 5,000 millimeters per minute, 60 to 90% power with air, while fill engravings is best around 8 to 12,000 millimeters per minute, 70 to 90% power without air. However, with the air toggled on, the result engravings are a little bit lighter. This all is not an issue when you use the Make It Up, which in fact delivers more or less as expected and approximately according to what you preview in the material selection. The great thing I noticed during the testing is that the machine has very good repositioning accuracy, which means that without moving the material, you can pass multiple times in the exact same spot in different project sessions without getting a doubling effect on the line. Now, leaving the test engraving, the engraving performance is good. On Birch Playwood, as you can see, it produces good results up to 36,000 mm per minute. So you simply need to choose the color tone you like and go for it. And the same goes with MDF. You get similar results with visible engravings all the way up to 36,000 mm per minute. I then also tackled some projects and they turned out very good with consistent cuttings and engravings without any sign of power drops. Let me now tell you what I like, what I don't like, and what I think it should be improved. Starting with the pros, you get a full enclosure with a structure system built in and an eye protection glass, which makes this machine very safe. The machine working size is great. It is built in air assist with onboard control. There is a cool z-axis movement which together with the touchless autofocus system makes focusing hassle-free. Built-in high definition alignment camera which allows hassle-free material positioning and optimized material utilization. Functional and easy to use desktop app. Good cutting bed and their collection tray for easy cleaning. Implementable Horo pass feeder that allows you to tackle very large projects and I'll be reviewing this in my next videos. Functional and easy to use roller attachment. The list could go on, but these are in my opinion the best thing to take away from this machine. All right, now let's look at something that instead I believe it can be improved and should improve. Light burn compatibility is good. However, I feel it could be improved even further for this season users like me. Similarly, the layer functionalities in the Make It software should also be improved. 
they should add the ability to switch speed unit into millimeters per minute and add some additional layer functionalities. Another thing which seems like it's been removed from the Make It Up is the ability to import G-code files. Now, this is not a deal breaker. However, I feel like for seasoned users, having the um, possibility to import G-codes which were generated by another software, it's a pro. Now, let me now tell you what I don't like instead or what, let's say, bothers me about this machine. The machine design creates the necessity to rehome the z-axis after each project to picture the bed. I found this a little bit annoying, especially when in your workflow you leave the sheets of material inside and you progressively cut your projects. So I believe it would be cool to have an option to toggle on and off the options when you, are, when you work with this kind of workflow. It's not so bad, however, it takes a little bit of time to do the rehoming and the refocusing. Now, another thing I don't like is the way the machine handles light burn generated projects and the way it overrides the actual speed parameters you set in the layer setting. Now, it is true that every machine handles the G code uh, in a slightly different way. However, I feel that at this point for seasoned users like me, it would be great to have some additional specification regarding speeds and acceleration at least we know exactly what to expect. All right, let me now tell you whether you should buy this machine or discard it. For a seasoned and advanced user like me, the feelings is a little bit mixed up, mostly due to software expectation. But all in all, the machine is good and I believe that it deserves a place in your workshop. My unbiased opinion though is that the machine is great, especially for newbies or people who are looking to get into an hassle-free experience. The brand has thought about everything. Machine comes with everything you need and could want out of a desktop laser engraver. The look is great. The functions are great. The accessories are great. It is very easy to use and set up. And you get a package 200% ready with an app having a decent design capabilities and a library of projects ready to go. So I would definitely recommend this machine. All right, and this is pretty much all. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. If you like this video, click the thumb up button below and do not forget to subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this one. Ciao for now.